All right, I'm Sadutli and welcome back. You're still right here with us on the hashtag Why in the Morning and for to for channel on all the rest of the social platforms and mine is a brand second one. This is the first conversation of the day and we're delving into matters tech and uh, specifically we're going to shine light on spotlight in the world of blockchain. What exactly happens in blockchain technology? What is it? Uh, there's somebody who asked me last week, what is the difference between cryptocurrency and also Binance and then now merging these things with the blockchain technology. What exactly is in it for you? And also, matters digital assets. Like I said, could you be rich? <laughs> or do you want to be rich? Are there opportunities in the blockchain technology? I have experts who are live with me in studio to actually delve into this interesting topic. So I want you to move close to your TV with a pen and paper and get to write down very important notes. So I'm being joined live in studio by uh, Wycliffe uh, Sewe. He's been here before. He's a blockchain and crypto forensics specialist and MP at AAD Forensics East Africa. If you remember him, he was here in another similar conversation as well, but this one is more advanced and more insightful. Alongside his counterpart, that is Dennis Kimmel. He's the COO at Chasing Mavericks, and he's, he's also a certified public accountant. Karibu sana. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, so maybe you can start off with uh, Dennis Kidogo, maybe just a little bit of your professional background and how you're merging into this conversation about blockchain. All right, hi. Uh, my name is Dennis Mutinda Kimeu. Um, I'm the CEO at Chesley Mavericks. So Chesley Mavericks is a PR and communications company um, which basically does uh, tech, tech events, mainly currently. Um, outside of that, I'm a certified public accountant, been practicing... Um, been practicing being an internal auditor for the last uh, uh, 10 years. So glad to be here. All right, Karibusana, uh, Wycliffe, you were here before. Yes. But uh, yeah, we are. We can, you can get to introduce yourself again and just uh, let people know what you do at AND Forensics. Wow, thank you so much uh, for the welcome. Right. And uh, just as you've mentioned, uh, my name is uh, Sir Wycliffe and I'm a blockchain forensic specialist at uh, ND Forensics. Yes. And uh, basically what we normally do, uh, we handle matters of blockchain intelligence, yeah. uh, anything dealing with the virtual assets, yes. anything dealing with the compliance in that space. Yeah. And uh, also we work alongside the law enforcement, helping yeah. them when it comes to investigating crimes or uh, crimes which are happening in the blockchain space. Yeah. and also with the legal experts as well. Mm. So today, of course, we are going to have an interesting discussion so that our viewers can also get to get understand, understand yeah. what blockchain technology it really is. is. And maybe we can still pick it up from there. I love the fact that you just steered it towards that. What is exactly is blockchain technology? Wow, thank you so much. Yeah. So allow me to uh, probably uh, uh, put it in segments so that our viewers can be able to understand uh, about this technology. I know for some time uh, people have really been uh, confusing given that uh, with blockchain technology has really been coming with a lot of waves mm. so uh, i'll start with the era of um, uh, web one you see same as human we have been evolving the same case also usually applies with technology as well yeah. so with technology we started back then when we used to have what uh, was called web one and with the web one, mostly what, you, what, what used to happen back then, companies just used to create um, uh, website solutions which were a little bit static. Yeah. Static basically means as a user, I cannot be able to interact with it. I could only be able to probably read news from that particular site. Yes. And nothing much could be able to be done from that particular end. Yeah. And then from there, uh, as technology continued to advance, we, mm. we, we jumped into the era of web 2. Yes. Now, with the era of Web2, uh, it was a little bit now more interactive. In fact, it's usually called um, the social uh, interactive uh, era of the Internet, yeah. where now, instead of me uh, reading probably a news which has been published by probably one of the most uh, technological companies, yes. I can be able now to interact with other users. And that's right. now the era where uh, the likes of Facebook, the likes of WhatsApp, the likes of Telegram were yeah. birthed during the mm -hmm. era of Web2. Right. And now you can be able to see any time we have got probably like a news update in the, uh, these social media channels. As a user, I can also be able to interact, I can also be able to share my opinion, and yeah. that's why it's called an interactive uh, 
a web 2 space yes. so from there now uh, technology is now shifting gear to what is called web 3 uh -huh. now as compared to web 2 with the web 3 it has got a technology which powers it and that technology is actually now what is called the blockchain technology yes. so basically what happens with the blockchain technology as opposed to web 2 when you look at uh, web 2 space we have got what I call the, the tech giant, the companies mm -hmm. which are controlling that space. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. It means uh, that the people who are like the central authority in that particular space, they determine what happens. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you probably write a prov uh, uh, vocating statement in X platform or Facebook platform, they can actually delete it or probably you can be shut out of that particular system. So it means yeah. there is a central authority. Right. Now, with Web3 solutions, mm -hmm. it now changes the ball game. Instead yeah. of having the central authority or the central body controlling that particular space, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, systems which are operating under the Web3, they are more decentralized. Basically mm -hmm. mean there is no any central governing body which is controlling the communications which mm -hmm. are happening within the Web3 space. There is no central governing body which is controlling the transactions which are happening within the Web3 space. It basically means we are conducting trans transactions or mm -hmm. communications in what is called a peer-to-peer. Mm, All right. Our own, you know, it's like your own community in that web. Exactly, our own community that web. It basically mm -hmm. means I own it yes. and you also own it. So most of yes. the transactions which are happening are decentralized in a group of computer networks mm -hmm. which are decentralized. So yes. through this, there is no any central uh, government or central authority who can actually be able to control or own or regulate. Uh, yeah. Exactly what mm -hmm. is basically happening in the Web3 space. Yes. yes, and that can make you susceptible to a lot of attacks, and I think that's where you come in as well. Exactly. So uh -huh. basically what usually happens now with the Web3 space or with the blockchain technology, mm -hmm. ideally what usually happens is uh, 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 the information which is stored or the transactions which are basically happening, mm -hmm. they happen in what is called a distributed ledger a yes. platform mm -hmm. and with the distributed ledger platform is basically a public platform where an individual can be able to view what is yes. basically happening in that space yes. and that's why with the blockchain technology majority of the people are currently embracing it simply because of the kind of transparency yeah. that it has and the mm -hmm. type of security that it has right. so ideally what usually happens with every technology that we all know is that yes. there is no technology which doesn't have its own hiccups right. so also with the blockchain technology of course it has got some vulnerabilities where right. the illicit or criminals usually uh, explore mm. and mm. they take advantage of especially from those users who probably do not know exactly what happens in that particular space yes. and I do believe even as we shall be continuing this particular discussion mm -hmm. I'll be touching mm -hmm. on on some of the uh, crimes that happen in that space and yeah. how the blockchain technology is basically helping the law enforcement and the legal expert to bring perpetrators into records and they can yes. be able to be uh, held accountable right. for the kind of uh, criminal activities that happens in that space. Mm, yeah. I've remembered money terror <laughs> something like that right <laughs> yes, yes i remember yes. What one of your colleagues when you were here last time mentioned yeah, sure, that sure. in the dark web right yeah sure, 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 sure. Uh, what is your sound off on that one dennis Sorry? what is your sound off on the same um oh. yeah so, so i think just speaking from where we clever said um i think blockchain is it's this new technology which mm -hmm. um, it's pretty new to everybody and it's ever evolving um there are so many use cases many people just know about cryptocurrencies i think yeah. the, the first and the finance <laughs> when you yes. bring in our bitcoin <laughs> trading and forex yeah. yes 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 mm -hmm. so they they only know about this um maybe the trading company exchanges that you mentioned like binance mm -hmm. and and bitcoin i think that's what when you mentioned uh, blockchain that's what comes to the people, mind, to people's yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, as as Cliffa said, it's it's way it's way bigger than that. Yes. Uh, there are so many other use cases uh, which people um, still realize in even um, blockchain can sim can can really be used in anything that you think you can think about. Uh, do you want to buy real estate? Um, so right now, I think the, the the biggest one of the biggest challenges 
yes. for especially the youth in Kenya, people who don't have like lots of money, you can't be able to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Blockchain can now help you to be able to invest in real estate. Yes. Uh, so instead of having lots of money, you can get a fraction of, of ownership of, of, uh, of a house. So you can have an apartment. Inside the apartment, you can only, you can only own a part of the apartment. So um, can be used for education, can be used for tracking records, can be used for tracking health records, can be used for by artists um, so that you can get value, both musicians and, and people who, 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 who draw pictures. Yes. It has so many use cases, which, right. uh, which some have been explored and, and some are yet to be explored. Right. So it's, it's this new technology which everybody is trying to get a grasp of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's ever evolving. So I think that's why it's very interesting and, 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 and governments also trying to play catch up um, right. with, mm -hmm. with it, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and what Cliff will sound for that, how, how the government of Kenya is stepping into that landscape in just a bit. But still on you, Dennis, yeah. at your company, Chasing Mavericks, uh, how have you guys tapped into that, this blockchain technology network and how is it maybe enhanced operations? Uh, maybe what are some of the results or some of the interactions and even the activities? And I understand you have an event, you'll talk about that uh, yes. probably this week. So you'll share in just a bit, but you can go with how have you guys tapped into the blockchain technology at Chasing Mavericks? Um, so actually the Mavericks mainly help companies who are trying to uh, set up in Kenya uh, on the blockchain space. So um, probably you want to get entry into, into the country, um, you want to know, you want to meet the regulators, you want to meet um, basically the community because as, as, as the Cliff has said, uh, blockchain is mainly about the community. Uh, you need people uh, because it's, it's peer to peer. So what the Mavericks does is help companies want to set up in Kenya uh, yes. to bring communities together um, and, 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 and bring to the light whatever this company is actually doing. So um, we, we look at the companies, um, they, they pitch to us and, and, and say this is what we want, this is what we are doing, and this is the kind of solution that you're actually offering to, the, to other companies or to people. So for example, if it's an exchange, we want people to come and use our exchange. For example, you want to buy and sell um, cryptos. Um, yes. So we want you to go and, 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 and say this is the product that we have. Um, right. If, if it's a company which wants to get connected with other other corporates, for example, uh, they come and tell us, okay, so we want to probably meet banks or meet 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 these other companies. We basically we try and connect. We try and connect for um, the blockchain companies and other other companies they want to they want to interact with there. All right, fantastic. Uh, Wycliffe, if you sound off on the same, uh, what his company does is, I believe, it has people's data. And that's also the main part. And before you guys came in, I was talking about how the U.S. Is, has this move and Biden signed it, President Joe Biden signed it. They want to ban TikTok. And the bone of contention was they just have no idea what China, uh, the owners are bite dance, I believe, who are saying that, please, we want to know what you guys are doing with our data, so please assure us. And I believe they're the back end. Yes. So they handle, they know everything from the population, gender, everything rest. So w when you look at what his company is doing in terms of data management, how do you, how, 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 how can such a company assure its uh, clients that, you know what, your data is safe in as much as you're conducting this business and it's World Wide Web, here are the safety measures and this is how we can stay afloat with each other. All right, okay, thank you so much for that question. And uh, I'm glad that you mentioned about uh, the current president of the United States of America. I know probably in, the, uh, in a couple of a few months, the United States will be uh, conducting their general yeah, elections. elections. It's actually this November. This November. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you've been following keenly, especially mm -hmm. with the presidential aspirants, the communication yes. or the type of message they've been trying to uh, mm -hmm. share with their followers. And right. the one key central thing which has been playing at the center stage mm -hmm. is about blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. The other day we saw uh, Donald Trump basically backing the Web3 community and right. assuring them mm -hmm. that once he ascends into uh, presidency uh -huh. or office, right. You right. actually give them the necessary or the needed support to ensure that that particular technology yeah. thrives. And he joined TikTok yesterday and <laughs> it made headlines. I saw it on <laughs> CNN even this morning there yeah. where he went to people saying he's now on TikTok and he garnered up to 2.9 million followers. You can see. Yeah. Uh, so the same, the same tonal variation also was picked by Biden also the, uh, as well when yeah. uh, he's... Uh, 
he did also some statement also mentioning how he's willing to support the Web3 or the blockchain community as well. Right. And uh, one thing when I was uh, probably mentioning about when I was divining uh, the blockchain technology and mm -hmm. one thing which stands out, which yeah. even makes most governments want to explore this technology in detail yeah. is about transparency. Right. You see, for the longest period of time, mm -hmm. majority of people have been putting their trust in these central governing bodies. Yeah. And uh, I don't know whether you have ever uh, read about uh, the biggest scandal which happened back then with a company which was called the Cambridge Analyta yeah, Analytica, Analytica, especially mm -hmm. with their uh, like, uh, user data. Exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a big scandal where right. they were, it was basically alleged that uh, they mined uh, uh, users' data without uh, people's knowledge and then yes. they used it in return, selling it uh, millions and millions of dollars. Yes. And uh, 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 this issue of uh, transparency, people's data, uh, yeah. data breaches yes. has been evident right. more so especially with these central bodies which have been controlling mm -hmm. this type of data. Right. And again, when you look at, uh, when I take you a little bit back further, when yeah. Bitcoin was, was birthed, right. back then in 2009 when it came into public, Yes. Uh, it was. was this, sorry, was this by by a Japanese somebody? Yes, uh, a guy by the name Satoshi Nakamoto. Yes, exactly. Uh, whom up to now people still don't yeah. know exactly, exactly what type of a person yeah. he was. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, Bitcoin was birthed immediately after the world experienced what was called the financial crisis back then, two thousand and eight. Mm -hmm. You see, and yes. all this happened when people, we had a lot of trust in the financial system, we had a lot of trust in government system, but ideally what turned out is that uh, these systems could not be trusted anymore. Yeah. So what happened? There is a group of people called the cypherpunks. Now with the cypher, cypher? cypherpunks, uh -huh. cypher with cypherpunks, uh -huh. uh, this is just a group of people, a team of individuals who believes in uh, uh, privacy, who believes in freedom. Right. So through that, they started exploring some of the technologies which can probably, uh, people can be able to communicate in a way whereby their data or their transactions cannot be monitored yes. by these central governing bodies. Mm -hmm. So they started putting mechanisms in place, not until 2009, when now Bitcoin was birthed, and apparently it was using the Bitcoin, uh, the uh, blockchain technology. Uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Now, my colleague Dennis mentioned about some of the use cases of uh, uh, the uh, blockchain technology, mm -hmm. and he mentioned that apart from yes. uh, the finance, where we have got the digital assets or the cryptocurrencies, right. this technology is basically used now in is being explored to be used in uh, uh, the likes of the lands in issues of title deeds is yes. being explored to be used in uh, supply chain management mm -hmm. is being explored to be used in uh, healthcare systems is being right. explored to be used in and agricultural the system even and the banking well. system yeah. as well mm -hmm. and the main reason why uh, this technology is being uh, uh, is being explored to be used in those sections if yeah. you are very much keen you'll notice that mm -hmm. uh, this these institutions or these areas, they are mad with some, uh, a lot of challenges, especially when it comes to uh, people's records, when it comes to uh, yeah. a lot of... Uh, Confident in uh, data. Conf exactly. Like they're trusted with a lot yeah. of confidence information. Especially now for like a healthcare system and even the bank sector. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, also, when you look at uh, election, for example, yes. uh, anytime, whenever there is an interference with our electioneering process, it right. cost us a lot of taxpayers' money when it mm. comes to the legal battles which normally happen in yes. the courtroom. Now, so Who entered the servers exactly. So, so now with uh, Bitcoin, so how can we solve that? Exactly. Now with uh -huh. Bitcoin technology, now that it comings, it comes with uh, uh, technology where there is a lot of transparency and right. people can be able to view whatever is basically happening. Yes. People can be able to audit what basically is happening on the on chain. Yes. So most governments are now trying to explore how they can be able to integrate this yes. technology into the already existing systems. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, uh, when you look at, uh, for example, Sierra Leone, they did yes. the elections back then in 
2018 yes. and uh, they actually employed the use of blockchain technology into the elections and it actually happened to be one of the most transparent elections to ever been. Yes. When you look at the likes of South Africa, for example, they are yes. trying also to probably uh, support or bring into life this Web3 or blockchain uh, uh, solutions, blockchain technology solutions to uh, take a huge chunk in most of the government operations. Yes. Uh, for example, in, Kes uh, in Kenya, uh, mm -hmm. there was a day, we, uh, the, sometimes back we had a case in place about uh, uh, BitPesa. I think right now they've right. changed their name, being called something else. Yeah. These are some of the fintech companies which are coming to place, uh, right. trying to incorporate blockchain technology, which yeah. can be able to give people what is called that transparency. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, the reason why blockchain technology is making a lot of revolutionary moves in the finance space is because uh, it is usually said that when you come to uh, when you look at uh, finance, for example, it's easier to send somebody an email from Kenya to, let's say, probably a country in South Africa, which they yeah. receive instantly, mm -hmm. as opposed to when money is being sent to you uh, when yeah. you're based in probably a country which is not in Kenya. A case right. in place, for example, myself, mm -hmm. there was a day uh, someone sent me some cash, cash mm -hmm. some money, uh, yeah. overseas, yes. and uh, through the traditional methods of finance. Mm, like it M-Pesa like or PayPal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> PayPal is more advanced. Exactly. Course, so yeah. it took days, first of all, uh -huh. before that money could be able to reflect into my account. Right. And then the mechanism of obtaining that money, I had to produce a lot of uh, KYC documentation. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that process was... Uh, was slow. Exactly. Slow. But yeah. now, when you look at now with the uh, type of solutions which are being brought into space with the blockchain technology... Yes. Blockchain technology is revolutionizing the financial landscape simply because mm -hmm. the kind of transactions which are happening in that particular place, yes. they are very fast. Right. Uh, the other day, someone sent me uh, money through cryptocurrency. It was mm -hmm. instant. I was mm -hmm. able to access it yes. very fast mm -hmm. with no much information being required or in that space. And that's, why, yeah. and that's why you'll realize uh -huh. uh, uh, the adoption of uh, digital assets or cryptocurrency currently right now, mm -hmm. it's being on a high rate or on a high level yeah. simply because um, uh, of the transparency which is there simply because of the uh, uh, low transaction of fees which is being expressed in that particular space. Yes. And also our data which you're basically mentioning is now not being controlled by one individual or one entity mm -hmm. our data we can be able to control it as long as we are operating the web3 space yes yes interesting uh dennis on the same uh yep. at, your, at your company how do you also transact in terms of now uh, he, for him he's mentioned people have sent him money personally yeah. so at your company how do you transact using blockchain technology yeah um thanks for the question um our company currently has operations in like seven countries in Africa. And for, for us, the biggest challenge uh, was sending money across because uh, we do events across, across Africa. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to deal with um, vendors. Uh, so for example, you have to do an event, let's say in Nigeria, you have right. to send money to the vendors. Mm -hmm. um, so what used to happen before, we used to use the traditional um, traditional system banking system money. yeah mm -hmm. it was very expensive traditionally very you mean bank to yeah. bank or <laughs> pesa to bank but it was mainly Vice bank versa. to Bank mainly, to bank. Mainly bank to bank. Or, yeah. or now it's sometimes. interesting how it's becoming traditional. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Before bank was like the most digital level. But sure, now sure, it's, like, sure, sure. it's like now becoming cliche. Yeah? Interesting yeah. how technology is advancing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, it was very expensive. So we had uh, sometimes sometimes to set up like have organization yeah. there. Um, um, com or people or intermediaries there because uh, using the the. the I don't call it traditional, or even the, the, the mainstream ways yes. of sending money was a bit expensive. Yeah. But right now, with, 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 techno with, with blockchain, you can yes. literally send somebody, um, a, a vendor, it yes. um, doesn't matter how much you're sending, you can right. literally send like a thousand shillings be mm. before, before we had like sort of to accumulate the amount of money because the transaction costs were really high yes. and, and, and just take a lot of time. Right now mm. you can literally send anybody as much, as low as possible right. at a fraction of their cost way mm. lower than even what you're paying like if i was mm. to send you for example yeah. money here in kenya mm -hmm. be way way cheaper and right. it's instantaneous 
-hmm. and it's transparent so the person cannot claim that oh I've not received money yeah. uh, stuff like that so it has really really helped us to reduce our cost of, of doing business across yeah. Africa um, mm -hmm. and then as you travel you now don't have to necessarily have to carry um, money or even your credit card because whenever you whenever you go so long as you have your mobile phone yeah. uh, whenever you go to whichever country you can easily access mm -hmm. access that local currency yeah. uh, the other thing was on the on the impact of devaluation of, of our local currencies because most right. of African currencies are actually devaluating mm -hmm. um, across across Africa yeah. so what this has helped us is to be able to hold our money in right. USD, uh, mm. if, if you know, for example, if you if you are to hold a USD account in Kenya, it would be very expensive Different maintenance yeah. and, and mm. all of that. And, and, and the dollar and keeps on fluctuating. Exactly. I think last week it was at thirty at one thirty two point something. One and they're saying it's going to go yeah. lower and then now finally go higher towards end of the year. <laughs> yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. So, so I, I think. Especially if you're, if you're dealing with, with different currencies, that, that is very disruptive to the business. Yeah. So what, what blockchain has helped us is be able to hold a uh, dollar equivalent. It's called a stable coin. Um, stable coin. Mm -hmm. Stable coin. So it's basically like holding a dollar, but, mm -hmm. but, but you're able to control that dollar. So yeah. if, for example, you have to pay somebody in South Africa, you don't have to worry about, oh, is the, the rand, for example, strengthening against the Kenya shillings, and are you losing yeah. value that? So yeah. it's dollar, dollar to dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be able to send that. So it has really helped us with, 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 in, in, that, in that aspect, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And also, how now do you source for your clients? Do, they, do your clients approach you directly, or do you guys have like a place where you've marketed and ad advertised yourself so that they just directly rhyme with what the services you're offering? How do you source for them? Um, most of our clients are referrals. So uh -huh. we, whenever we do events, we make sure we do like super, super good events. Right. So, so most of our clients, they recommend us. So if somebody is, for example, wants to set up in Kenya, they'll say, okay, you guys have to work as Mavericks because they do a good job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, apart from that, we, we, have to, we also market. So we are on social media. Right. Um, both um, mainly LinkedIn because our clients are mainly um, corporate yes. clients. Right. Uh, so we are heavy on LinkedIn, heavy on Twitter because um, Web3 again, they're right. mainly on Twitter and, mm. and Telegram. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Telegram is for their community, uh, Twitter and, and LinkedIn are for uh, now for the, for their corporate, like, so for, for our visibility. Yeah. We, but we also use Facebook, we also use Instagram. Mm -hmm. but not as much as, as the two, two other, other platforms. Right. Uh, we also have our website. Mm -hmm. um, we do, um, uh, w so most of our clients actually come from our events. So like the event that you're about to do next week, yeah. uh, this week rather, that's happening on Friday. Thursday this week. Yeah, uh -huh. so we, we try and bring together everybody in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so for example, this year's, um, um, this year's theme is yes. the role of uh, blockchain for mm -hmm. financial inclusion in Africa. So right. we're trying to- That's big. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really, really wide. Um, uh, so we're trying to see how blockchain can be used because as I've say, I mentioned, blockchain can be used in so many areas. Right. Uh, we're trying to see how, how, how blockchain can be used to uplift our financial um, stability, our financial um, muscles even as, as a continent. So yes. what we're basically trying to do is to showcase most of the companies we've dealt with them before. Right. Um, there are some of them our clients. So we want to showcase what they're actually doing. So, uh, so, so, that so you can bring it to the light that uh, this, this solution is actually there. Yes. If you want to send money to, for example, another company, to another country, yes. we have a company who, which is exhibiting or, 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 or showcasing their products at, at, at their conference yeah. in order to see what they can do. And then we brought in all, yeah. the, all the, the key regulatory authorities in Kenya. So we have right. the central... Um, Markets Authority, we have the KRA, we have, we're working with LSK, we are mm. working with many banks, um, yes. with many banks, we're working that with even the communication companies, ICT right. authorities, working with the government, mm -hmm. most of the government officials are going to be there, working with the county, so yes. that they can be able to see what, yes. what, so, what some of the solutions they can be able to see, um, they can be able to explore around, around, around that area. Yeah. Right, interesting. And I'll come back to you so that you tell me how's been the feedback so far. Yeah. What are the, your clients saying? Yeah. But uh, uh, Wycliffe, I'd love you to jump in in terms of our digital economy. I love the fact that our president is very passionate about the digital superhighway. Sure. When we specifically delve into, um, you, we call them digital assets. In our country, Kenya, how is that conversation and how far is it? And what are people saying? Before we talk about now the regulation, he's, she's just mentioned the CMA. That's yeah, sure, very sure, a key sure, critical sure. role. Sure. It plays a huge role when it comes to regulation in Kenya. Yeah, 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 sure. So talk about that in sure. just a bit. Sure. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, 
at the digital asset space so far. Um, Maybe you can start off by what exactly are digital assets and then you can proceed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I know probably from uh, the layman's point of uh, a view or from the layman's uh, language, of course, asset are usually referred to uh, those uh, things that have value. Mm -hmm. Now that we have added an element of digital mm -hmm. on it, it basically means uh, things that have value but which operate in the digital space right. or which can be transmitted or uh, transmitted electronically or through right. electronic means. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what makes them digital. Right. Now, so uh, in short, you can have, you can own a multi billion dollar, let's say, resort, but all the money is at Digitally, right? Yes, exactly. That's what it somehow, so somehow, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Now, uh, with the digital assets, that's where now we have what are called the digital currencies as well, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, with the digital currencies, basically means these are currencies where one can be able to transact with each other through an electronic format, yeah. through that blockchain technology which you had mentioned mm -hmm. in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So with the uh, currency so far, when you look at the market, the last time I was checking, uh, mm -hmm. so far, mm -hmm. we have got over 20,000 different types of cryptocurrencies which are uh, currently circulating in the, the market. market. Verified and approved, or some of them are like So uh, <laughs> that's now the interesting yeah. bit now that given that uh, most countries are trying to uh, uh, develop the regulatory framework right. so that at least from there we'll be able to determine which mm -hmm. type of cryptocurrencies will be allowed to be consumed yes. in the Kenyan market. Right. But with that being said and done, right mm -hmm. now when you check on the statistics, yeah. Kenya is being ranked among the top three in Africa, especially mm -hmm. as one of the country which is quick in adopting the virtual assets. Yes simply because on some of the structures which the government has been putting in place in terms of uh, internet penetration, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is actually also what is called the peer-to-peer -peer transaction yeah. which mm -hmm. normally happens in the cryptocurrency space, Sorry. which happens mm -hmm. in a type of cryptocurrency. I know maybe yeah. probably one day when we shall be discussing uh, right. the different types of cryptocurrency, there is one which is called the stablecoin, yeah. right? Yes, and Kenya is also one of the countries which is leading, uh, which is leading when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Yes. So ideally, uh, it basically tells you with those statistics that as a country, already we have consumers or people who are already engaging uh, in uh, the digital uh, uh, asset space. Yeah. So that's now why you are seeing most of the. Uh, communities we are currently imploring mm -hmm. now the government of Kenya right yeah. to come and start putting some regulatory framework in order right. for the citizens who are basically participating in this space can be protected right and uh, it is something which has been lacking for quite some time given yeah. that it's a new technology and uh, mm -hmm. most governments have been trying to understand how yes. this technology is working and how can they be able to integrate it with the existing mm -hmm. systems yeah. which they currently have in place so that at least it mm -hmm. won't probably like uh, uh, cause a little bit of havoc with the yes. entire economy that we have in a particular country. Mm -hmm. But so far, I totally, uh, I, I, I can clearly say that uh, we have been experiencing uh, progress as a nation, uh, yeah. simply because the other day we saw the formation of one of the communities in Kenya which has been at the forefront of spearheading these regulatory talks uh, yes. called the Blockchain Association of Kenya, which right. has been trying as much as it can to bring uh, relevant stakeholders in place mm -hmm. whereby they can be able to discuss, negotiate with the government to come up with the rules of engagement in this particular space. Right. And again, you'll notice that this is one of the space which if if it doesn't get regulated yeah. then as the citizens of this particular country we stand to suffer simply because mm -hmm. with the criminals right what normally happens they're usually yeah. 10 steps ahead of the game right. and that's why immediately when they got to understand how this technology operates yeah they learned it so fast and they took advantage of it so fast. And that's right. why any time when you mention the likes of Bitcoin to people, the likes of cryptocurrency to people, mm -hmm. the first thing that clicks into their mind is scams. 
right? right? The forex specifically. <laughs> and exactly. The yeah. boats that uh, keep on boating. E exactly. <laughs> so uh, those yes. are some of the uh -huh. first things that click into their mind, simply because yes. uh, with the, uh, the illicit actors, they mm -hmm. normally take advantage knowing that people are still green and they don't exactly know what yeah. basically happens in this particular space. Right. And also they take advantage that with the, this, uh, mm -hmm. with the digital asset space or the digital currency space, right. transactions can are borderless, which means yes. you can be able to transfer money from Kenya to a particular country yeah. without a lot of questions and a lot of documentation. And so that's when money laundering comes in. And that's where also money yeah. laundering comes money in. Money terrorism. Uh, money uh, financing ter terrorism. Yeah, financing terrorism. Yes. Yeah. The other day uh, was basically, we were basically dissecting a particular case with one of the law enforcement officers from the uh, U.S. Yeah. And uh, one of the uh, one of the victims was uh -huh. uh, scammed, uh, I think, uh, with uh, uh, two hundred thousand US dollars. That's equivalent to around uh, mm -hmm. uh, is it mm, 20, 20 million there about? A lot of money right yeah, now. that's a lot of money. So, mm -hmm. in a span of in a span of thirty minutes, that money had already touched several jurisdictions. Hmm. That money had already touched Europe, that money had already touched Asia, that hmm. money had already touched Africa. Hmm. And, and that basically tells you the right. power of blockchain technology, simply mm -hmm. because the transactions which happen in that particular space happens mm -hmm. very, very fast. fast. Yeah, right? It's instantaneous. It, like it's it's very agenda. instantaneous. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? It means, given that uh, with these particular characteristics which embodies this particular technology, when government comes in and starts regulating and putting the rules of engagement in place, it will right. be uh, so prudent so that even with the law enforcement, the legal expert, they can be able to uh, participate in this particular space and also come up with ways that we can be able to protect the citizens who are expressing their interest in participating in the Web3 uh, yes. community. Yeah. And that's now again where mm. we uh, probably come in as a firm Right. Simply because uh, we work in handy with the law enforcement, trying right. to help them as much to trace the crimes which are happening in that particular space. Because right. ideally, uh, you will see that any time uh, a scam has happened, for example, yes. uh, and uh, probably someone comes and scams you your money, and this money he transfers it or converts it into cryptocurrencies. Back yeah. then in the days, any time money has been converted into a digital asset or digital currency, that case was a bygone, simply because uh, with the law enforcement, they didn't have that capability or the knowledge on how they can be able to follow or track what mm -hmm. is happening in the digital asset space. Right. But now, again now with the technology which is uh, coming to space, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are now emerging technologies which can now help them be able to uh, uh, to follow or monitor or even investigate whenever mm. someone has uh, experienced a particular scam. And right. what basically makes it easy is because with blockchain technology, all the transactions are recorded and they are immutable. Immutable right. basically means mm -hmm. it's hard to change. Mm. And that's why if you jump into this space and you start transacting, a right. hundred years from now, if mm -hmm. I want to check on some of the transactions which you've been having, yes. I can be able to follow them through even since you jumped into this particular space. And I can be able to say that Brian Sakwa, based on the transactions which I'm basically seeing, he mm -hmm. basically entered this space probably in 20, uh, 2024 or 2025. Yeah. That gives, and th through that uh, verifiability or through that immutability nature of the blockchain technology, right. that's now what helps the right. majority of the law enforcement to be able to track and investigate how mm. the crimes which are happening in this particular yeah. uh, space. Right. So in a nutshell, uh, mm. I know as time goes by, uh, now that the regulatory framework or the regulatory talks are currently happening, yes. especially with uh, uh, the regulatory bodies which we have in the country, for example, right. the Central Bank of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, the Capital Markets Authority, already mm -hmm. they have been trying to form and create technical working groups who are right. trying to see how this space uh, is basically uh, operating mm -hmm. and trying to come up with ways they can be able to harmonize mm -hmm. uh, the field uh, to an extent in, uh, to, to in a manner uh, whereby they will be able to still promote innovation yeah. and promote the uptake of blockchain uh, technology right. and in a manner they'll be able also to protect the users who are currently transacting in the space as well.
Yeah, before I get to you, Dennis, uh, interesting. That's very comprehensive. Uh, it has reminded me of a wild coin. Remember when it yeah, came in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were yeah, collecting yeah. sensory <laughs> data. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the, the, the amount of time they took and the people who turned up, it was so many. But then <laughs> the questions were, how did the government allow uh, such a body to intrude Kenya and collect such sensitive, key sensitive data, sensory data, in exchange of some one, two, three dollars? How did that happen? And then also the question is, well, are these regulatory agencies? Yeah, I, I understand. And uh, uh, it's one of the uh, discussions which were uh, hotly debated about. You see, uh, for example, with the world coin, which you have mentioned, and as I mentioned about uh, the digital currencies, you see, we have not been having a legal framework. So I cannot be able to hold you responsible, or I cannot be able to pin you down that you're doing something which is illegal, yet we don't have laws in place which can be able to pinpoint that whatever you're basically doing is illegal. So with this type of gaps, that's why you'll see companies like WorldCoin when they yeah. notice that uh, as a country or as Africa, most of the uh, governments or most of the nations that we have within Africa are right. lacking clear regulatory framework Frameworks. Mm -hmm. on how uh, people's data can be collected okay. or people data, people's data can be consumed in the Web3 space. Yes. For them, th th they were like, why can't we just come into this space and uh, right. do our thing? Because and they the disappeared with the data, funny <laughs> thing. Well, <laughs> we have no idea what they're doing with it. <laughs> Apart from those who benefited from the few dollars that they got, which as in you out. can say, oh, they took my eyes, but at least I got a hundred dollars, <laughs> which is not worth it. I understand. Because this is your data. Mm -hmm. You just have no idea what they're manipulating up there. Yeah, sure, I understand. But uh, given that it's something which uh, the government is, has been trying also to follow closely with them, I don't mm -hmm. think if... Uh, uh, if uh, through that collection... Uh, uh, the collection was a little bit malicious because I was trying to read uh, through their white paper. And uh, with the white paper, yes. anytime there is a cryptocurrency or a digital token which is being released into the market, mm -hmm. there is always what is called a white paper which is published. With the white right. paper, you can be able to study it and be able to understand uh, mm -hmm. the use case of this particular uh, yeah. coin which is mm -hmm. being released into the market. What exactly is it trying to solve? All right. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at the white paper from WorldCoin, and uh, mm -hmm. I noticed that uh, they were trying to solve what is called the identity management. And with the identity management, that has actually been a problem, not even uh, in Kenya alone, but globally, where we have been experiencing what are called the identity theft. Right. Someone just mm -hmm. comes, uh, steals your identity, mm -hmm. probably uses it to do a transaction in a particular uh, jurisdiction yes. and at the end of the day you will be the person probably liable and when yes. the law enforcement tra start tracking you down you will yes. actually be jailed for right. that so with uh, wildcoin when they now came into the market they were trying as much as they can to be able to find out how can we be able to solve this problem of identity management okay. so that with this data which i've collected and i've been able now to uh, uh, put this data to operate on a blockchain platform so mm -hmm. if this is Bran Sako whom we are talking about. Mm -hmm. There is no any other person who can be able to yeah. steal your identity to mm -hmm. use it in and probably an illicit activity. It, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So with that, they were trying to solve that the cases of identity theft. Yeah. So probably to those people who were uh, talking uh, mm -hmm. concerning it and the manner in how they were collecting data of which I understand they yeah. had probably to approach maybe the data protection offices which we have in Kenya. Which they distanced exactly, themselves exactly, by the way. Ex they, exactly. they, they never it said they allowed them. Ex in fact it was linked to a certain <laughs> cabinet secretary <laughs> yes. and then finally revoked exactly. now it's a yeah. story of the past. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. So I think uh, with the bodies which we currently have in place, once they just have uh, the proper mechanisms on how people's data needs to be collected with the yeah. companies. I know companies will come, not even WorldCoin alone. So many World, uh, Web3 companies will be coming to the market and mm -hmm. people's data are going to be collected in the market. But mm -hmm. as long as we have that 
clear regulatory, regulatory framework which will be okay. able to guide them, mm -hmm. then I think with Web3 yes. we'll be able to solve that That's problem which Walcon yeah. had identified about mm -hmm. the identity management mm -hmm. issue. And yes. I'm pretty sure experts like you from AD Forensics will be there. Let yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let me jump on to you, Dennis. Uh, he's mentioned about data management yeah. before you actually just tell us about the feedback. So have you also uh, installed a system that's helping to manage people's data, especially now your clients? Yes, yes. Uh, so I, th I think as we mentioned, data is a very critical um, segment. I think it's, it's called the gold of, uh, the of, of this century uh, because yes. all the big companies across the world, um, they're basically big because of data. Google yes. mines your data, Facebook mines your data, all of these big, big tech companies mine your data. Yeah. So for us, uh, I think f for us it's very key because um, a biggest, the biggest reputation risk for us would be if data leaked for, for our clients or for, for, for our database, data leaked. So we have, of course, um, invested in, in using um, some softwares um, or some mechan mechanisms to ensure that our data is protected, our client's data especially is collected, yeah. is, 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 is secured. Um, simple things like email or phone numbers, I think they're not critical, but uh, outside there they can be used for, for a lot for a lot. Yeah. Um, so how is it collected and uh, where, how do you manage it? Maybe we can go deeper into the details of that. Yes, so, so we use Google Suite. So I think Google, beca because um, it's, it's tried and tested, um, um, we, we use Google Suite to, to ensure that our data is, we collect data using Google Suite and, and just um, maintain it there and ensure that it's, it's we, so we have um, internal um, uh, mechanisms ensuring that, uh, like, let's say, if password. Uh, we have strong passwords. Just the basic uh, security mechanisms to ensure that our, data is, our clients' data is protected. Right. Yeah. Um, because the the thing we fear about using other other other, other not tried and tested uh, mm -hmm. systems is that we are not sure whether, um, whether 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 actually using our data or not. But yes. at least Google is 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 a tried and tested tried and tested uh, uh, system. Right. Yeah. Um, to ensure that inside only few people control the data, only few people have access to, to, to the white data. And are they experts, the people handling the data? Because you can't just be into a server, you know, like what happened, well, I'm not trying to call up, but yeah, it was in the public, whoever were entering the servers, their footprints, there's something called the digital footprint. You are, I'm pretty sure both of you understand that. So how are you able to track that this is the person who was last year, they accessed this and this is what they did, or they manipulated something or they yeah. adjusted something? How do you check on that. Yeah, the good thing about Google Google search it has a timestamp. So whenever you enter a document, um, you'll be traced. So okay. um, so we're able to know who entered a particular time. And also we have a Google Authenticator, which whenever some of the data that you protected, before you can enter, you have to get that password, which is generated almost every every minute. Right. Yeah, so for our key sensitive data, we have a Google Authenticator. But for most of the data, we choose on a day-to-day -day basis on, on a Google Sheet. So that Google Sheet, everybody, whenever somebody enters it, it has a timestamp. Mm -hmm. So able to know who entered at what particular time and what yeah. they used to, what they used to, to do uh, what did they do, do with yeah. the data? Yeah, the activity. Um, mm -hmm. Most of our data we usually use it for uh, for marketing, so for email marketing, for communication to our clients. If we have offers, if somebody wants to meet somebody, so so we use that. And of course, before we can, uh, pro for example, share our data, uh, yeah. we we have to ask. So. For example, if a, if a certain company wants to meet another company, we have to ask this per this person who is uh, basically the one who wants to be met. Uh, yeah. We have to ask them whether we can share this de information with this other company. Right. Yeah. So we don't share our data with uh, with, with everybody uh, yeah. without, without proper authorization. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the other question was, how is the feedback so far from the clients and what are they saying in terms of their, your service that you offer? I think it's been amazing uh, because... Um, I think f our company has been the first company which has been able to bring the whole ecosystem together. I think as, as, as my colleague has mentioned, uh, yeah. blockchain, uh, there are like 20,000 20, coins. Times, and yeah. you'll find that all of these coins, they have their own communities. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. Bitco um, crypto is mainly driven by communities. So what used to happen, you have a coin, yeah. which has its own community, a different coin, which has its own community. So they all work in, in, in silos. Yeah. So what our company does is try to bring everybody together because all of us have a common um, a common direction which we, at the end of the day we want to we want to go so the reception has been good that um, at least for once everybody has been able to come together and over and above that being able to bring these people who can make decisions 
uh, on the way forward. Uh, like, for example, you mentioned about uh, Blockchain Association of Kenya. We work with them to come up with, with, with one of the dig uh, digital asset, uh, virtual asset tax. Uh, yeah. So trying to bring everybody together in the, in the ecosystem. Yes. So I think we've made some progress, we've been mainly in blockchain, for the last one year, as much as Chase Mavericks have been operating for the last seven years, right. we went fully into blockchain for the last since last year. Yeah. I think for the last one year, the reception has been like great. Uh, we've been able to do some great events uh, uh, with with good community reception, mm -hmm. and, and and I think the 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 results are speaking it all because now we've been able to get a lot of referrals. Uh, uh, I, I think the, my main satisfaction is when we get somebody refers to us that if you want to go and do this thing, go and talk to Chazin Mavericks. That means that um, you can vouch for us and, yeah. and, 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 and being able to satisfy your, um, your needs. Yeah, the yeah. trust, yeah, the trust really matters, especially when it comes to service and, yeah. does, and customer care relationships. Because, you know, you can be the best CEO, but your communication is work. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, is yes, work. Yes, uh, yes. Yet you're the best in the market, but just the culture of that organization, yeah. Yes, really yes, matters. yes. Let me jump on to you uh, before I come back still to you. Mm -hmm. uh, Wycliffe, when you look at in terms of also conversations around awareness, the, the somebody who has also asked a question, let me, let me not forget it first, then we get. Uh, somebody asked, what is the difference between blockchain technology and cryptocurrency? And it was Hannah, she just sent it right here. So maybe before you answer her question, if you look at the, cal the, the, the ecosystem right here in Kenya in terms of awareness, are we having enough conversations? And maybe people like you now that are coming on th onto the market, and I understand you have an event as well that's happening on this Thursday, does it mean we need to have more of such so that people get to be aware of, and also get to know like what is exactly is happening. Can even a local company like let's say a Mitumba company, a Mitumba distribution company at Gikomba tap into such a space and ensure that they stay afloat before you answer Hannah's question? Right. Uh, I thank you so much. Uh, I'd also thank you so much Hannah for uh, the question. Uh, I think uh, when I started uh, defining blockchain technology and also throwing in the aspect of Web3 uh, with the uh, 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 cryptocurrencies, the technology which is driving, which is all the behind uh, cryptocurrency is actually the blockchain technology. So with blockchain technology is a technology which enables cryptocurrencies to operate. It's actually uh, the network or uh, the ledger, the distributed ledger which I talked about. Yeah. So with most cryptocurrencies, they have adopted uh, the blockchain technology uh, mechanisms yeah. uh, in most of the operations. So when you are talking about um, uh, Bitcoin, for example, and I mentioned it, yeah. actually Bitcoin is one of the cryptocurrencies which brought blockchain technology into public. Would you say that is a trading coin? Uh, what in the, in the blockchain technology? The the Bitcoin. Th th that's a platform. It's, it's that's a, a network. Oh, it's a network. For example, let me just put currency. it in a simple. Yeah, okay. let me just put it in a simple way. Let's go ahead. Uh, right now, if you look uh, at a website, a website mm. cannot be able to operate without an internet. True or false? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. the likes of Bitcoin, Ethereum, cannot yeah. be able to function without the blockchain, blockchain technology, technology. Mm -hmm. network. Because so it's a network which powers. Yes, because somebody asked, what is the currency of trade in the blockchain? I, b I believe that, that that's what the, your explanation is, a response yes, to yes, this one. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. uh, maybe just move on to uh, the adoption, the, which, uh, the other question, which you had mm -hmm. mentioned about uh, the small scale uh, businesses, whether they mm -hmm. can be able to... Um, Tap into tap the blockchain into technology. Uh, uh -huh. particular technology as well. Uh -huh. And uh, my colleague Dennis mentioned about the various use cases of blockchain technology. Uh -huh. It not only uh, revolutionizes uh, the financial sector or the banking industry, but uh -huh. it also touches every aspect uh -huh. of uh, some industries. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, through that, I also mentioned about uh, the supply chain. Uh, right. Through that, we also mentioned about the real, as, uh, real estate. Yeah. Uh, maybe probably uh, uh, as time goes by, as we continue with these discussions, there is a day probably when we shall be talking about tokenizations. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And now with the tokenizations whereby uh, people, n ordinary people can be able to take advantage yeah. and invest in these uh, maybe real estate businesses where they thought maybe they cannot be able to uh, invest in and this is only being made 
uh, possible through the blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. So with the blockchain technology, this technology is able to revolutionize even the smallest business that there ever existed. Yes. And that's now when you mentioned about um, the awareness. Right. You see, those are some of the bottlenecks which the community has been experiencing. Right. Uh, first of all is regulations. The other thing is education and awareness. And the other thing is... Um, uh, the other thing is the infrastructure, how mm -hmm. it can be incorporated so that it can be able to <coughs> probably operate with the existing right. uh, uh, infrastructures that we have in place. So right. education and awareness plays a very important point. Right. And uh, lack of it is actually what makes majority of people probably to fall into the hands of scammers. And that's right. why you mm. see now with this particular event which has been organized, which will be at the conference which will be running from Thursday to Friday, these are now some of the mechanisms which the likes of Chasing Maverick are putting in place so that the public can yeah. start to get to understand what this technology is all about. Right. The public is getting educated. Mm -hmm. The other day when I was interacting with the Blockchain Association of Kenya community, they were mm -hmm. basically developing some of the frameworks and uh, uh, methods on how they'll be able to incorporate communities and how this information will be reaching out to the public so that they get to understand mm -hmm. what exactly this technology and how can it be of benefit to right. our day-to-day -day life. Yes. So with tech, uh, with the... Um, with education and awareness is uh, really powerful and it's important and it's needed. Mm -hmm. And through that also with the government, they'll be able to understand how best can we be able to tap into this technology right. to be able to uh, help us in operating most of operations. Yeah. When you look at Ghana, for example, the mm -hmm. other day they were trying to put into test how they can be able to incorporate blockchain technology into their land registry. Yeah. Issues of fake title deeds have been rampant. Yeah, even right here in Kenya. Exactly. And right uh, in Kenya. Uh, yeah. was it yesterday or the, other, uh, the day before mm. when uh, there was a landmark ruling and uh, it, it actually came as a shocker. For the longest period, we knew that Kenyatta yeah. International Conference Center, Center. Oh, mm. I, I don't know, it was <laughs> it, it belonged to who? To, and then yeah, they're saying it belongs to Kanu and then yesterday they're saying it. <laughs> actually, I pointed that out in my <laughs> intro. They're saying it's now the government. It's Kenya. It I, I, owns I, I, by the I country. Oh, right. So you yeah. see now, and it's a landmark. And it's, it's still a landmark. A landmark. <laughs> yeah. So you can, through that, you can be able to see that for the longest period of time, mm -hmm. this landmark building of which any t anybody who has been born in Kenya can be able to relate with the KICC yeah. all along. Somebody who has actually been owning it, apparently yeah. it has turned out not to be the yeah. true owner of that particular person. And they're saying it since 1969, and now May. You get the idea. <laughs> right. So now with the blockchain uh -huh. technology basically uh, helps us now right. to sort such kind of Ca issues. issues yeah. So with Ghana the other day, they were trying to put... Um, uh, uh, to test uh, mm -hmm. how they can be able to incorporate this technology into their land registries yeah. so that now when it comes to issues of land ownership, they right. can be able to pre uh, prevent or minimize cases of fake title deeds, cases of uh, ownership of land. And I think mm -hmm. the same thing will also start to be experienced in Kenya. And if blockchain technology can help most government to sort that, then yeah. we better be prepared. It's only a matter of time before we start seeing government incorporating such kind of a technology yeah. in most of the sectors where they have been experiencing hurdles. Yes. Mm. And the more so when it comes to the land issues. And now that they've digitized everything, actually over a thousand services are now online. E exactly. So exactly. I think it comes in handy just sure. in the nick of time. Sure. Uh, before I jump on to you because you're just about to exit, mm -hmm. maybe as a, foreign, a, for a data forensi forensics expert, or hopefully I've gotten it right, uh, what exactly do you do? For example, let me try to imagine uh, a dubious transaction happens at uh, Dennis's company, yeah. and uh, this client is, is, he is burning with fire <laughs> and sulfur. And then they want to inquire for your services. So when you come in, how do you detail your expertise in terms of let's find out what happened, A, B, C, D, case and point, case and point, and then you give a solution for you now? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much for the question. Now, uh, from uh, the blockchain forensic uh, perspective, uh, what normally happens uh, back in our lab, we have got uh, the forensic, uh, the blockchain forensics tools or the technology which help us to be able to uncover some of the illicit actors who have 
probably conducted an illicit activity in the cryptocurrency space yeah. or in the digital asset space. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, 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 cryptocurrencies, for example, uh, there is one attribute which they have which is called pseudonymity. And with yeah. the pseudonymity basically means whenever we are doing transactions, we are not doing transactions, uh, for example, Brand, Dennis, and Wycliffe in that manner. But what basically happens in the crypto space, we are conducting transactions using our wallet addresses. And through right. wallet addresses, mm. one cannot be able to tell who exactly is behind this particular wallet address or who is exactly conducting this particular type of transaction transactions and that's yeah. why you'll notice that most of the time the law enforcement have actually been hitting a roadblock whenever uh, maybe uh, illicit produce let's say uh, funds which have been obtained through uh, an improper way lands into the cryptocurrency space yeah. they cannot be able now to tell to trace, yeah. and trace mm -hmm. these particular funds so that's so, now where mm. our expertise comes in. So how do you trust With the that? tools which we have in place, we mm. can be able to unearth mm. who exactly is behind mm. these particular transactions. Right. How? So I think that is the <laughs> most important part. <laughs> how do you unearth? Yes. Uh, uh, it's, yes. It's, uh, we have got uh, what I call the blockchain analytics tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, with these blockchain analytics tools, uh, there are procedures or mechanisms which we, uh, uh, it's more or less um, uh, too technical, and I wouldn't want to probably jump into the Just briefly on the technicality bit mm -hmm. of it. Uh -huh. But ideally, uh, a case in point, uh, let's say, for example, when someone has been scammed. Yes, right? especially uh, Forex, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has been scammed. Yes. And this particular person believes that uh, the scamming happened in the digital assets based on the digital currencies. Mm -hmm. So when uh, probably we receive this report or he goes and reports to the law enforcement officer right. and the law enforcement officer probably uh, reaches out and asks uh, how can we be able to help this particular individual. Yeah. So ideally what we normally ask for are the addresses. Uh -huh. You see? Mm -hmm. Because before, f in order for you to transact in the digital currency space, mm -hmm. you need to transact using the wallet addresses. So right. I'll basically require your wallet address mm -hmm. and also the wallet address that you channeled your funds to. Mm -hmm. So through that, once I obtain these addresses or the address which you had channeled your fund into, mm -hmm. once I pick it mm -hmm. and place it into our forensic tool, yeah. It can be able now to display or mm. it can be able to indicate for me yes. how your funds have been basically moving into the blockchain ecosystem. Mm. And through that, yes. uh, we normally have uh, what are called decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges. Yes. Uh, when you are tracing or tracking fund, we can only be able to track them through the decentralized exchanges. Mm -hmm. But once they hit what are called the centralized exchanges, yes. that's now with the centralized exchanges basically means these are exchanges which now probably operate uh, like the banking setup. Yes. And with the banking setup, when you're opening up your account, they'll require your identity card, they require your uh, pins, they will require your uh, passport and every other thing. Right. So once we are doing those transactions and then we notice mm -hmm. that this particular transaction has landed to a centralized cryptocurrency, a centralized exchange, mm -hmm. so from there we can be able to uh, liaise with the law enforcement yes. and they can be able to reach out to the centralized exchange and they can be able to uh, uh, ask for the details of this particular, the owner of this particular address. So through that, uh, they can be able to know who exactly was behind this particular nefarious yeah. activity. Right. So yeah. That's so that's how basically happens. how it happens. So you guys have taken notes. We have to exit, but uh, yeah. tell us maybe uh, how can people get to hear about your company? What are you guys looking forward to as well? Because we are out of time. And uh, also, uh, who are people? that you want to work with, and then also talk about your event shortly before we go. And then maybe Wycliffe will finish with uh, uh, how you're taking in young people to ensure that they're incorporated so that they learn about the future of the digital assets in Kenya. So go first in less than, let's say, a minute, because we're right. about to go. Yeah. Sure, I go. Uh, so thanks very much for this platform. Uh, so you can all, all learn about Chasin Mavericks on our website, all our social media, they're there. Uh, and basically learn about the, about the services that we offer. 
uh, about the event that is happening on Thursday and Friday. It's happening at Karen, a place called Semastea. All are welcome um, to come and participate and learn about how blockchain works and basically interact and be able to see what, what, what is going on in the sector. Um, yep. Thanks for, for the opportunity. Yeah, who are you looking forward to work with in terms of companies? When yeah, you say uh, startups, can startups Yes, partner yes, with we you? work with startups, we work with um, companies already established in the blockchain ecosystem, companies yeah. who want to come into the blockchain ecosystem or, or just explore, um, explore um, opportunities around the blockchain ecosystem. We also want to work with institutions, and, and basically anybody who wants to learn about blockchain and cryptocurrencies yes. uh, will be able to go to people. Yes. Do you have a number or an email on our yeah. website? Yes, yes. So we have our website, Chesin Mavericks. Okay. Uh, you can reach us to on, on info at chesinmavericks.co.ke. Uh, on, on, uh, our phone number is 07 200 100 020. Uh, that should be easy to, to, yes. to learn. Yeah. And they can attend the event on Thursday happening at? A uh, semester. Uh -huh. So semester is a center for the mathematics mm -hmm. uh, and, and sciences. It's in Karen. Mm -hmm. um, going to happen on Thursday and Friday. Right. Yeah. So you know where to plug in this week, the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, all roads will be heading there. Uh, Wycliffe, what is the future also of the space? Right. Yes. And maybe so what should the youth uh, mm -hmm. look up to in terms of having this and more similar conversations? Right. Thank you ah. so much. Uh, so what I can clearly say is that uh, blockchain technology is uh, basically here to stay. And uh, initially, uh, we saw instances where most uh, governments tried to uh, shut it down, most governments tried to restrict the operation of uh, blockchain technology within their jurisdiction, until late we, uh, the, uh, when government noticed that uh, actually this technology carries more use cases and it can be able to solve most of the underlying problems or aching problems that they normally experience when it comes to uh, management of government resources. Uh, that's now when the idea of uh, uh, legal frameworks or uh, regulatory matters have already started to be discussed within different jurisdictions across so many governments in Africa. So through that basically tells you that uh, this is a technology which is going to be inexistent for quite some time. So what happens, especially for those probably who would want to participate in this wonderful endeavor, I normally tell people it starts with knowledge you have to be educated, you have to become aware so that by the time you are either investing, by the time you also want to become an analyst or a forensic specialist uh, like myself, you need to start from the education point of view. And that's again also where we come in as AND Forensics, where we normally also offer training also uh, uh, to uh, individuals, also for, to the law enforcement, to the legal experts, to regulators, uh, to accountants, given that uh, also in this space, now that most fintech or most companies are trying to incorporate uh, crypto assets as a form of uh, mode of payment to their uh, operations, they also need to understand how this technology works. So you can also be able to get us, uh, mm -hmm. to reach us out from our social media platforms, AND Forensics, and also uh, through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter as well, or you can uh, email uh, us at contact us at a adforensics.co.ke or you can reach us out through 0711-873-870. Through right. so that we can be able to discuss yeah. and probably see mm. how best we can be. Yeah, we can further the conversation Thank as well. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both. Uh, Sewe Wycliffe, he is a blockchain and crypto forensics specialist at AD Forensics East Africa. Ensure that you plug in into the platform as well and get to understand more of this and such conversations as well as Dennis Kimeo, COO, Chasing Mavericks, and he's also a certified public accountant. Thank you so much, guys, for coming through. This has been Thank a you. riveting conversation, and it's endless. Thank it feels you. like you're just starting, but we have to go. Thank you both. And that's what we say. We are taking a very short break. Our next guest is live with us in studio. It's about to be a chat first right here at Brian Sakwan 1 at Y24 for Channel. We'll see you on the other side of the break in just a bit.